Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel again, nice to see you. Today's video is going to be about this tank again, and plants, and CO2, and fertilizers, and all these things that I clearly don't understand. So it doesn't look too bad from far away, but as soon as you get up close, you start to notice we've got some green algae down here starting to form on the sand. And as you get in a bit closer to the wood and the rocks, for instance, you'll see that they're starting to get some algae growing there, quite bad in some places. So that is what we're trying to combat. So the first thing that I did um, was I started off with quite a short uh, photo period, so I had the lights on for quite a short amount of time. Um, we've got these lights here, these are the Aquarian Eco. They are some nice LED lights, they've served me well, they've done pretty good, I like them. And I've got two of them, but as you can see, only one of them's on. So we started with a short photo period, started to see some algae, turned off one of the lights, still saw some algae. Um, so yeah, struggling a little bit. So now we're going to look into some CO2 and ferts and balance. You can see that there's a little bit of algae problem there. I've obviously not got the balance right. And balance is what is important when we're talking about planted tanks. Light, fertilizers, CO2. Um, we need to get that right or we're going to be running into problems constantly. So I'm going to try and dial that in. Those of you who have been here for a while, and if you haven't been here for a while, please click that subscribe button. It really helps me out or share it or like it, comment, anything you want. But those who have been here for a while know that I did run CO2 on this tank for a little while. I ran it using, I ran it using a bottle like this, which has got a capacity of 600 grams. So as people rightly pointed out on that video, a tank this size on a tank that size isn't going to last very long. And it didn't, so you were right, I was wrong on that one. So I've gone for a little bit of an upgrade, so a normal upgrade that you would go for would be the next stage up might be a, a fire extinguisher or something like that, a 2 kilo or a 5 kilo. But me being me, I've gone for a 10 kilo one. <laughs> so the reason I picked this is because I got a fairly good deal, more than anything else. This I got from a supplier who normally supplies pubs, bars, restaurants, that kind of thing. And I got them to get this, especially small, it's not that small, but it's smaller than the normal ones they supply. They normally go for the ones which are about four feet high. That should last a long time on there. A big tank for a big tank. So today's video is going to be talking about the basics of CO2, how we get this set up, what equipment we might need, what dangers we might run into, maybe some tips and tricks hopefully. But as we know, I'm not an expert, so if you've got any comments, tips, tricks of yourself, get them in the comments down below. So let's take a bit of a look at the things you need. Obviously, you're going to need your CO2. So I've gone for this bad boy. Cost me about £40 from a resupply place. You don't need to do that for, even for that size tank, you probably don't need to do that. So you might be looking at aquarium specialists, you might be looking at fire extinguishers. Anything um, for a tank this size, you're obviously going to need a bigger capacity, but for smaller tanks, these kind of um, I call them soda stream bottles or these are for welding. These kind of tanks, they, they last me on my small tanks quite a while, so that should be fine. Once you've got your CO2 source, you need some form of like regulator. So on this regulator, or on this one here, this is the regulator, which is just a little screw on device which has a needle valve on the end here which lets you control the flow out of the tank for something a bit bigger you're going to need something a bit bigger and you get a regulator like this so this one you'll hear a lot of talk about this on the websites just because it's got two dials doesn't mean it's a two-stage regulator this is just a single stage regulator one side um, whichever one it is one side actually tells you how much pressure is coming from the tank itself and the other side lets you know how much you're letting out simple as that twist it so the first job is to attach the regulator to the big tank so let's do that just simply goes on like this it's got a big nut on this end tighten it on um, I was telling me a lot of people get confused here because they see the screwing there and think they need to put PTFE tape or something around it. It doesn't actually screw in. So you're using this kind of washer gasket that sits flush against this bit here. 
So you simply get it up, line it up, and it should just be a case of screwing it on, if my big fat fingers would let me do that. So I'm just going to get it hand tight at the moment, and I'll go in and tighten that up afterwards. But essentially that's what it will look like. We've got our two gauges here as we said, and here is where the line is going to come out. We could kind of just go with that, um, but it would very much be guessing what was actually going on. The next thing I'm going to connect is this device here, which is a solenoid. So power comes up to here. I can attach this to a timer so as I can make this come on and off whenever I want it to. And the job of this is to it's essentially a valve in here that stops the gas getting through. So when I want it to be going through and putting CO2 into the tank, I want it on and then I'll have a, a timer that will switch it off and I don't want it to do that because you only want to put CO2 through during the day or just before lights come off until just before lights go off. No, until just before the lights come on until just before the lights go off because you want to be adding CO2 when the lights are on and oxygen when the lights are off. So that's simply what all that is. The next stage I've got here is a bubble counter I'm just reusing one that I had before and um, literally you are able to count bubbles so this is full of water and as you switch the gas on you'll see the rate of bubbles coming through and you'll be able to know what rate is giving you what output through to the other end and then this is the bit that goes in the water this is your delivery device so this could be a wooden air stone it could be a diffuser a reactor all different types of things there we'll talk about that in a little minute but that goes into the water and then I have something like this which is a drop checker uh, and you fill it with a special solution that you put in the tank and it tells you whether you're not adding enough CO2 just the right amount or too much so on the end I'm going to use this it's a reactor this is a Sarah reactor I do have a video on it I'll post it up there you can have a look at that but essentially what this does if I can take it apart easily is you have a container but it takes water in through here now that can either be fed by a manifold on your pump or you can put on a little water pump there that goes in smashes I don't know if you can see it very well there but there's a series of fins and fans they spin around very quickly and the CO2 goes in here on this little bit here CO2 goes in, water goes in, it smashes it to bit, getting as small bubbles as you possibly can. Those bubbles then dissolve into the water, which is down here, and this is all spinning round, obviously, and dissolving those bubbles even better. And then by the time it gets taken back up here, the, the CO2 is in effect fully dissolved in the water. Spits it back out into your tank. So the goal here, this is about efficiency rather than how much CO2 you can get in. It's about using the CO2 efficiently. So the goal here is to get those bubbles to dissolve into the water before the bubbles hit the surface. Because if the bubble hits the surface, that gas is escaping. Simple in theory, but a lot of people don't seem to get that. And what we want to do is try and get that efficiency up as high as possible. And I have found this to be the number one way to do that so far. Well, certainly without spending loads of money. So we're going to stick this on the end. So I think we're going to have to put it in this section here, which currently has my auto top off in it. But I'm not currently using my auto top off, because, mostly because the pump broke. Um, but I generally don't seem to need it. If I'm doing, I, I tend to do at least two water changes a week on this tank. And if I'm doing that level of water changes, the, the water doesn't drop that low in the main part of the sump down here. So it's not really a big issue for me. So I think I can sacrifice that space and that'll give me a little tank to use for some other kind of project and I can get the CO2 tank in there. But for the first of this video, because there's a big faff to take that out, I'm just going to locate that over somewhere here. Maybe put a plant in front of it, hopefully my wife won't notice. So we'll start with this. I need to crank this on a bit tighter. Which is a bit awkward the way this particular bottle set up, but it is just a case of it turning that until it is tight. That should do. Then if you look at the 
gauges here, this one should go up to something like 800 PSI if I turn this on. Which it has. And then this one here controls what comes out of here with this dial here. So if I, you can feel that, you can see the gauge going round, tell you what pressure you've got on there. It's counterintuitive this because this is actually off as loose as possible because the tighter it gets the more it lets out which is a bit weird but yeah that's perfect that's just what we want step one done next the solenoid so that literally just slips up here now i would put a little jubilee clip on this hose clamp here but as i'm just doing this as a temporary setup i'm sure it'll be fine So as we turn that on, you'll see nothing's happening because the solenoid is off. I'll just turn that back off for the time being. So notice this has still got pressure on it even though I've turned this off. But that's because it's got nowhere to go, nowhere to escape to. So as soon as I plug this in, if I can find one of these fancy foreign adapters. That'll turn the solenoid on and you should see this gauge drop. If I do, like so. It's also just squirted water all over the floor out the end of this, but hey ho. That's a problem for another day. Next, after regulator, solenoid, bubble counter, we go through to output device. So again, yours might be some kind of diffuser, some kind of regulate eh, reactor, or even just a wooden air stone or something like that. But in this case, we're using this. So the air goes into this little nipple here and gets tightened on with that. And then this pump on that end pushes the water through, bashes all the air together, and then back out this way. I've actually already got a bit in the sump here. Yeah. Which goes like that. Just because that fits my configuration. So we are pretty much good to go. So it should just be a case of connecting this to the pump, powering everything on and testing it. So we'll do that. Right, everything is working. So just testing everything here before I start to put it wherever it needs to go. We've got the CO2 on, it's showing a healthy pressure on this side, barely registering on this side because we've already got uh, quite a few bubbles, I don't know if you can see that, the bubble counter. Um, possibly I have bought the wrong regulator, so you get regulators for all different kind of things. If you want to get one that's specifically for aquariums and for CO2 for aquariums, you're going to spend a lot more. This is some kind of welding regulator, so it's probably expecting a lot more pressure to go through than there is, but it's just off the, the bottom line there. And that's plenty for this bit. Um, I could add a further uh, valve in here somewhere to get a needle valve so as I could really dial that in. But I think we're good to go here. Biggest tip is don't scrimp on scrimp. Biggest tip is don't scrimp on the regulator because if this fails, uh, one of the ways it can fail is to just dump the whole bottle of CO2 into your aquarium and that would not be good. Um, as well as that, don't start high. So start low and build your way up to dial in the settings. So what I'm gonna do next is get the, the solution here so as we can make sure that we've got the right levels and monitor that for a little while, slowly building it up to get to the level that we want. So we'll move on to that now. Okay, we're in and we're running. CO2 has now been added. Um, if you have a look down here, there's the tank. Um, it's adding. What we don't know yet is exactly how much is being added. So I'm going to use this, which is a, a drop checker, which is a, a clear window there, um, but the water can actually access from there. You add the solution, and it tells you how much CO2 you've got in your aquarium. So you simply put this somewhere you can see in your aquarium easily, like right here. 
and we'll keep a, an eye out for that. If I'm honest, it's not the most intuitive one. Um, so this one in particular goes from blue, saying you've not got enough CO2, to, to a dark green, saying you've got it just right, and a light green, saying you've gone overboard, you've gone too much. Uh, other ones I've seen, they've used different colours, so one will be blue, orange and green, or blue, yellow and green, which is a little bit better, especially as I'm a little bit colour blind, but it is what it is. Um, so, like I said earlier, the way you want to start this off is by adding not enough CO2 and building your way up, rather than wham it all in and, and dialing it back. So, for a while, we're going to have this one here. I'm just going to keep an eye on it throughout the course of the day and try and dial it in using the regulator down below. Now, why are we doing this, you may ask. Um, what I'm not saying with this video is that if you have an algae problem, if you add CO2, everything's going to be great, because that's just not the case. I'm not going to tell you what the answer is, because I haven't figured it out myself, and if I did, I'd probably be a very rich man. What I'm trying to do is get some consistency going, because balance is what you're going for. If you have an imbalance somewhere, which I clearly have because I've not got that there. I can't diagnose it until I start being consistent, so I want to be adding the same amount of CO2, the same amount of light, the same amount of fertilizers, and then I can dial in and get the right balance between them all. I don't think I've got any particularly demanding plants here, but as you can see, for the past few weeks I've been chopping and changing lighting schedules, trying to get them all. So if not, drawn a line under it, starting from scratch and building upwards. So, the more CO2 you have, the more lights you can have. So I can get at least get my lights back on properly uh, because as much as this is fine I don't think it's quite as good uh, as if I have both lights on. And to me that's a little bit more pleasing. So I've got the lights right, can crank up the CO2 and then I need to dial in the fertilizers. So I have been using um, It's TNC Complete um, as the fertiliser. Um, I think I'm going to stick with that because I've just ordered another bottle of it. And I'm going to stick with that and um, make sure I get that right. And hopefully I should see, I mean, so you can... Hopefully you can see that there is some decent growth going on in there. Um, obviously the algae is growing quite well, but there's lots of new growth in all, almost all the plants. Um, Lots of fresh, bright green leaves, so I want to encourage that and get rid of all the the dieback and the algae. Get rid of that again. So next off, I'm just going to go through very meticulously and boringly, go through and rub down all those plants, all those rocks, get rid of what algae I can, do another big water change, and at least we're starting from a, a level playing field, if you like. So back on the theory of me being an idiot, um, I've got the CO2 tank down there. I can't actually get out that tank because of this. Uh, if I, I didn't think about it, but at the time when I first set this tank up, I put that tank in before the sump. The sump goes right up to it, there's no space to move the sump. And there's this pillar here, which means I can't get that out. So, so I'm not quite sure what to do need to come up with some way of disguising that because that will not pass the wife test. So in terms of air pump, I'm just going to use one of these little cheapo air pumps um, and put that on a timer itself to make sure it comes on when the lights go off because what I want to do is get as much suction in there as I can during the evening and have the reverse during the day and the reason for that is because obviously they consume the CO2 during the day when it's the sunlight hours if you like and give it off during the night so we want to reverse that in our aquariums and that'll give us the best chance for the fastest and most lush growth yeah and for smart plugs I just use these things again got them off Amazon I'll put links in the description to all these things affiliate links you can make me a millionaire if about 300 million of you buy these things um, but they're all fairly inexpensive. The, the biggest outlay was the massive CO2 tank, but you can get, I think, a 2 litre fire extinguisher with something like 30 quid off Amazon. Um, 
you can get better deals if you shop around, but look for somewhere that supplies bars, restaurants, that kind of thing, you'll usually get the best deal. All the other bits, fairly inexpensive, fairly easy to put together. A lot of people get worried because it's, it can seem quite dangerous and if, and if something goes wrong it can be a bit catastrophic sometimes. So if you were to do dump all that into the tank at once then obviously that's night night fish. But it shouldn't be that scary. So hopefully that's been of use to some of you. Um, if you're new here again, like I say, hello, nice to meet you. Um, hopefully you're checking out lots of the old videos. But thanks for joining us. We've had a few new people in the, the past couple of weeks and months. Um, so hello to you, uh, if you are new, and hit that subscribe button and notification button if you aren't, and tell your friends. And hopefully next time you see this tank, it will be lush and green and beautiful. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. End up just dumping in a load of CO2 into the... That could end up... Someone is at the front door. Um, but there's easy and... Easier, ba 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 and dissolving those bottle bottle <laughs>